Welcome to American Medicine Today, presented by the Bonatti Spine Institute, featuring the internationally acclaimed inventor of the Bonatti Spine Procedures, Alfred Bonatti, MD. Now here along with Dr. Bonatti, your host, Kimberly Brumell. Thank you for joining us for American Medicine Today. I'm Kimberly Brumell. We have our friend, executive producer, Ethan Euchre with us. I am here. Glad to be here as always. <laughs> our senior fellow to my side, Jeff Wagstaff. Good afternoon. <laughs> and world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Alfred Benatti of the Benatti Spine Institute. Thank you for being here, sir. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Man of uh, very few words. Few words. Um, what you need to know about Dr. Benatti is he didn't just learn traditional open back surgery and stick with that typical textbook teaching. He saw that there were problems with what was being done to those that went through um, invasive surgeries, and he set out to find a way to remedy that. He really wanted to bring relief to people suffering from any type of spine pain, necks, back, sciatic, uh, headaches, that sort of thing. And so it took him years, but he developed his own patented uh, tools and methods to get that to happen. And those are called the Bonatti Spine Procedures. And he actually has patented uh, methods of removing hardware that doctors put into backs because that actually causes uh, patients a lot of side effects. And um, we have a very great percentage rate and a lot of satisfied Bonatti Spine Institute patients that we hear from. Uh, with that said, coming up, we'll speak with Brett Wilcox, who's a licensed professional counselor, athlete and activist, and actual author of Monsanto, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but you are. feeding the word world lie after lie and the gist and of it is uh, Brett and his son mm -hmm. ran across the country sort of to raise awareness for GMOs which are genetically modified organisms organisms mm -hmm. um, it's and Monsanto is a like a an herbicide company I believe based mm -hmm. out of South America we will get into it with him but it's all about the, the some of the crap that's in the food that we eat yeah. and, and, and how uh, it can affect you and how it can affect your uh, your health mm -hmm. so make sure you stay tuned and, and of course segment. It will mm -hmm. be, yes. And then we'll, of course, hear what's new in American medicine today with Dr. Bonatti. But up first. In today's Back to Life segment, we will talk to a patient of the Bonatti Spine Institute who went from living a life that was restricted by pain and discomfort through their journey of finding the Bonatti Spine Institute and are now living pain-free. Well, I'd like to welcome to the program Bandy Herman. He is on the line from North Carolina, so thank you for joining us, sir. Good morning. I'm glad to help. <laughs> well, uh, why don't you tell us kind of what caused the pain that you're in and kind of walk us through that process. What was it like for you? Did you seek out other treatment? And then how you found your way to the Bonatti Spine Institute? Well, I did a little research up here in North Carolina. Um, most everybody up this way seems to want wanted to do the more traditional uh, fusion uh titanium rods and things like that, and very invasive, right. and uh, I decided to check out um, some other areas, and my, my own doctor up here suggested I look into uh, the the type of surgery y'all do. Hey, Florida. hey, Bandy, let's uh, let's back it right up. If you could ch tell us how you started to feel pain, where sort of uh, yeah, pa what? paint a picture of how you started to feel pain and where it was before you started to look yeah. for doctors. Was it like a radiating pain or localized? Why don't you start there? Uh, my actually my mobility and uh, my the pain in my legs kept increasing over the last. Uh, for about a year, year and a half, that I really started noticing how uh, limited I was becoming mobile, mobile-wise. Mm -hmm. And uh, excuse me, there's a lot of lines coming in. But anyway, bottom line was is the pain got to a point where I didn't feel like I could function uh, very well anymore, and, and I. It was a building process well over a year's time. Okay. And I finally got so frustrated with it, I needed to do some research to find out what to do. Was it like a tingling pain, a sharp stabbing pain? What What was it that you felt? Um, it was more of a, a, a dull but radiating pain coming from basically my waist down both legs. Mm, okay. 
and this this pain just started out of the blue? Well, you know, I, I, it's hard to tell you exactly when it started because it's, uh, again, from what I've learned, it's it, it was a, a building process mm. um, that, that just took time to finally, you know, you try to live with it as long as you can. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, but it, it no, it, it, it started slowly and then got to a point where I just couldn't stand the pain anymore and the discomfort of it continually and becoming more and more restricted as to my ability to to physically move around. Was it affecting your job? Oh, yes. And what what do you uh, do? I sell real estate for a living, and it was to a point where I would uh, have a hard time even climbing stairs. Wow. Um, so, but the pain got to a point where you just couldn't take it anymore and had to seek out relief. Pretty much. Uh, it just, it, I, I had to do something. I, I just, it, it was very excruciating. And any time at all spent on my feet, uh, my, my whole lower body would go virtually completely numb. Well, Mr. Herman, Except, when yeah. you got to that point, didn't mean to interrupt you there, but when you got to that point, tell us how you sought out the Bonatti Institute and that initial contact and how uh, the interaction with the Institute went, how you made a des- the decision to have the Bonatti procedure performed. Actually, a co-worker of mine referred me to someone else, and I, quite, mm-hmm. for, quite frankly, I can't remember her name right off the top of my head, mm-hmm. up here in, in uh, Newport, North Carolina, okay. and she just gave glowing reviews of... of what y'all had done for her, mm-hmm. and I started doing some research. And at the same time, my uh, about that same time, my doctor had uh, me get an MRI. Mm-hmm. And when the results came back on that, uh, he said, sorry to tell you this, but the only thing that's going to fix you is surgery. Mm-hmm. And he suggested that I look into your area down there because um, the traditional surgery did not have a very high success rate. And Bandy, so you got a word of mouth recommendation for uh, the Bonatti Spine Institute as well as your your own doctor telling you to come on down here. So I assume you got in touch um, and probably sent your MRIs down here. How did it go from there once you first made contact with the Bonatti Spine Institute? Um, I've never been to anything that's been more professional. They were fantastic. Very helpful. Um, my wife, who, by the way, is the daughter of a doctor, um, was just as impressed as I was from the moment uh, we made contact um, uh, till the time we walked in the front door. We were just treated fantastically. And when you walk in the front door there, it's just, it, it's, a, it's a great facility, and they hold your hand through the whole process mm-hmm. and explain everything to you very clearly through the whole process, which is what's most important to me. Did you, um, sorry, um, did you feel as though the evaluation, um, Dr. Benatti was able to assess the areas that were causing your pain? It was pretty amazing. I mean, it's almost by where uh, he comes in and tells you where your pain is by looking at the MRI. He He's that knowledgeable about how the nerves affect everything else and which nerves affect everything else. I was pretty surprised at how he did that. And uh, then he explained how he was going to fix it. Okay. So tell us how the actual procedure went, and uh, you know, you, you did the conscious IV sedation, um, where you're awake and alert for the most part, but you're not feeling pain, and that allows the doctor to pinpoint exactly where the pain is emanating from in order to fix that. Sort of describe the process for us, if you would, Bandy. Well, I, it, I, it's interesting. I don't remember that much about the first procedure, but the mm-hmm. second procedure, I felt totally aware of everything. Mm-hmm. And uh, they even allowed my wife to sit in on the second procedure. Did she enjoy um, that? Where they literally they they had to go in there and, and mm-hmm. grind out the stenosis. Mm-hmm. They uh, trimmed 
the bulging disc, mm. and they actually put in um, the the uh, bone grafts. Oh, okay. Um, and I remember them putting those in place. Mm -hmm. I remember the uh, trimming up the, and, uh, of the uh, bulging disc. I think that was done with the laser because I could feel that when getting warm mm -hmm. and uh, uh, distantly remember the grinding. Um, but my wife was totally impressed with how they pro did, went through the whole process. Mr. Wow. Herman, did you watch the procedure while it was being performed? I did not, but my wife did. <laughs> she, probably, she, 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 she was probably hoping that you would be in pain, although you were no. not in pain. That's a typical <laughs> wife. <laughs> I don't I mind one. My wife's my wife pretty good to me. I'm not going to say another word. <laughs> That's probably best that you don't. All right. Um, so, Bandy, how are you feeling today? And did you feel immediate relief of pain after uh, the first couple of surgeries? And uh, take us up to the present day and how you're feeling. Um, I really was just amazed at how well I did right away. Mm -hmm. Although I did have a couple setbacks um, where I where for some reason I would overdo because I thought I was doing an awful lot better than I should have done. Mm -hmm. But uh, for the last, I'm going to tell you, I mean, I, I immediately went home and I was walking a mile in the morning and a mile in the afternoon um, every day. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know what I did wrong, picking up the pace too much or whatever, I did have a slight setback, uh, but I would let it rest and then get back on the and start going again. Um, Mr. Herman, would you be it, comfortable recommending the Bonatti Spine Institute to friends who are suffering like you were? Actually, I have done that several times. I think I have sent a couple different people down there to see you when I talked to somebody uh, just a couple weeks ago and suggested he contact uh, the Bonatti Institute. Excellent. Um, well, uh, uh, I mean, and these people are going to other well-known mm -hmm. medical institutions to get evaluated with and get treated with. Right. But uh, just like myself, I I didn't want to go through that massive invasive situation that, mm -hmm. that uh, other crowds were talking about. This just sounded and made more sense to me. All right. Well, another successful uh, back to life segment. We're glad to hear that you're Thank you. you're uh, living pain free, Bandy. And uh, I'm sure Dr. Bernardi very quickly would like to, uh, you know, uh, thank you for coming on down and uh, letting him fix your back, Dr. Bernardi. They're pushing my they're pushing my luck, uh, <laughs> Bandy. Now let me let me let me tell you something. How far were you able to walk before the surgery, and how far are you able to walk now? Before the surgery, I was lucky if I could get to my mailbox and back, which is about 150 feet from my front door. And that and was with pain or without pain? Uh, that was everything going numb and, 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 and a lot of pain in my legs. Wow. If I remember uh, well, you told me uh, in the history, initially you said to me that you were numb from the waist down. Is that correct? Oh, it was horrible. Yes, sir. Okay. That's very correct, doctor. And... And now I can I can walk. Well, I stop at a at a mile, but I can walk much further. <laughs> I don't even walk a mile. And I'm 34 <laughs> years old, so he's in better shape than all. You're doing good. Hey, and you are cheating also because remember you have problems on the other side that we need to fix. Uh -oh. Well, but you know what? I think. Well, we'll get to that one day. I, uh, at this point, I'm I'm pretty pleased. Um, but I, and I want to thank you because uh, you told me exactly what would happen, and that's pretty much what has happened. Um, and the people I have sent to you were very pleased. Thank you, sir. All right, Bandy. So well, that's, we, that's we, important we, to me. Absolutely. Well, yes. we appreciate your time, Bandy, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Have a great weekend and continue pain-free living, my friend. Thank you very much. Y'all have a great day too. Yeah, you, you too. too. Take care. Take, take it easy. You know, those are just the stories that we hear week after week. Mm -hmm. And it's not just one instance. It's patient after patient. Um, 
you heard yourself. He went to leading uh, surgeons in his area. They were talking about invasive procedures. He didn't want it. He researched it, found the institute. It was the best thing for him. He went from walking, what, 100, 150 feet um, with numbness and pain. Now he walks at least a mile. Um, Fantastic. And that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. You are listening to American Medicine Today on News Radio 970 WFLA. Continue to listen. We'll be back on the flip side of the break. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Benatti created, perfected, and patented the Benatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Benatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Benatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Benatti succeeds where others fail. This is the first time that I am pain free after 18 years. And it's just wonderful. I love it. Phenomenal results. No pain whatsoever. My pain is virtually gone. Nothing short of a miracle. Those surgeries gave me my life back. Already I feel like a new person. I'm going home new. I can chase my grandbaby now. I can garden. I can cook. And uh, I'm really thrilled. The outcome has been remarkable. I feel 100% better. It's like a miracle. It was phenomenal. It literally did change my life. I was in a wheelchair at that time and uh, I left here walking. Every single pain that I had when I came here is gone. I'm ready to go home and feel great. This place is great. Thank you. Everything that they said they would do, they have done and I'm very, very satisfied and happy with those results. I knew in surgery, in fact I told the surgeon when he relieved the pain off the nerve. The pain is gone, I'm feeling wonderful. I have no pain. I feel better than I felt in four years from the surgery. It was almost immediate relief. Today I am totally pain free, which is just amazing. It's fantastic. It definitely works. I mean, I really don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Benatti created, perfected, and patented the Benatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Benatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Benatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Benatti succeeds where others fail. You're listening to American Medicine Today, presented by the Bonatti Spine Institute, featuring the internationally acclaimed inventor of the Bonatti Spine Procedures, Alfred Bonatti, MD. Once again, here are Dr. Bonatti and your host, Kimberly Brumell. Thank you for joining us for American Medicine Today, brought to you by the Bonatti Spine Institute. I'm Kimberly Brumell, along with Ethan Euchre. Mm -hmm. Here I am. And our senior fellow, Jeff Wagstaff. Present. And oh. world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Alfred Bonatti. Oh, I thought you'd forgotten now it's time to see what Harry Reid, Nancy Pelosi, President Obama, and the Democrats have simmering in Washington, D.C. Let's see what's cooking in Barack's crock. My favorite segment ever. Go ahead. What's cooking, Dr. Bernardi? I don't know, but let me tell you this. The, I'm so happy that the uh, Attorney General is gone, man. Mm -hmm. He's gone. He's out. Mm -hmm. He's out. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he resigned because he knew that he would continue a little bit longer. All of these things that run that he was doing that would fire him, not 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 yes. to resign. Mm. Uh, I've got some of these. What, what is really bad is that Al Sharpin is already talking to. No. Yeah, he's <laughs> already talking mm -hmm. to elect the next one, and why should and, he have a say? Well, this is what is incredible. The guy, this guy, is accepted in the White House to discuss the the possibility to choose the next uh, attorney general <laughs> well and i'm telling you this it is going to be black 
Why don't yeah. they just call in Wiley Coyote to assist with the decision making? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> There's a, I pulled up a quick article knowing that we were going to talk about this, and uh, apparently some of the Republican lawmakers mm -hmm. uh, took to Twitter when they heard about uh, Eric Holder resigning. Some of them are kind of funny. Um, Tom Rooney, he says, Holder's tenure will be remembered for refusal to uphold, uphold law and constitution, disrespect for role of Congress, and contempt for the institution. Mm -hmm. So that's not much of a farewell. Uh, How about racial divide? That's another one. Jeff uh -huh. Duncan says, My words about Eric Holder are strong, but are appropriate given his abysmal record as our Attorney General. Good riddance, Eric Think Holder. Goodbye. Your disregard for the Constitution will not be missed. Yep. So the Republicans had some... Yep. Uh, some to, some strong words. To quote yeah, you know a something? Saturday Night Live skit, bye bye, <laughs> bye now, bye bye, now. bye bye, go as far as you can. <laughs> exactly. In your favor, actually, you might like this one, uh, Doctor Benani. I know you like Senator Ted Cruz. He took to Twitter and said, "Sadly, AG Holder has proven to be the most partisan AG in our history. It's mm -hmm. good news he's announced his resignation." Exactly. Great. Here, Except here. I don't know why the administration <clears throat> didn't do the right thing and fire him. Well, well, him and Barack are buddies. Yeah, they're, they're, they're pals. pals. They're drinking buddies. They're well, latte yeah. sippers okay, together. Right. He's just a scapegoat. <laughs> latte so Let's face it. Mm -hmm. He's a scapegoat. Yeah. I mean, he, he is to blame, but he's a scapegoat. Off topic. One but of the minions. It just came well, up. I, I don't care if he's a scapegoat or not. Mm -hmm. I hope he escaped as far as he can. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. Dr. Bernardi, it, it just Jeff and I were just riffing sort of as we were talking the, the uh, latte salute this week. Did oh you have God, any thoughts about that? that? Oh, that you know what? what? About that. But other, they've even proven. I, I'm not, I'm not a huge Obama supporter. I don't. No. I don't hate him. <laughs> I don't. Nobody oh, wants you, to do you. that. And and I certainly never hope that he fails. You don't but belong. I am just you don't belong to this program. <laughs> Get out! No, but seriously, who we wish really, really well who? in her future endeavors? <laughs> let me, let me, let no, me. No, 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 I let need me, to clarify. Eric Holder, shut her mic off. Kimberly Burmell. <laughs> I need to clarify this. Oh. No true American, no true American should want the president to fail. Oh, wait, a okay. wait a minute. Okay. Wait a minute. No, 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 wait Dr. Minute. Benatti, please. No. Let me finish this. No person okay, should want. Okay, listen. I'll listen. No person. <laughs> Round one. And <laughs> Round fight. one. No, let's, seriously. Let's breathe. Let's breathe. I need some oxygen. <laughs> well, breath. seriously, no one should want the president to fail. However, when we see time and time again, he is doing things to uh, make the United States less than the great country that it is, and what he's putting into motion is not to the benefit of the citizens. And not, and I'm not meaning handouts, people. Um, then it's time to realize the problem and get them out of office. I think okay? you're being a Democrat. <laughs> you're a demo. Oh, she's well, a dem. A well, let me, dem. let me tell you this. I'd like to demo the White the, House. The, the individual, the individual. That was clever. Has, I like that. <laughs> the individual who has the and rebuild. Okay, can I can I say something? Can I Continue. finish? Okay, can I finish? Can I finish? No. Nope. Right. Let me let me tell you this. If the Second round. Round two. round two. Okay, let's breathe a little bit. Okay. Uh, you got this, Benadi. You got he it. Had, he had the opportunity of an incredible opportunity. He did. The opportunity of his life, not yes. only the people trusting him, mm -hmm. the people give him the position. Mm -hmm. And then they stand up to protect him mm -hmm. because this guy is being protected. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, if it will be a white president, he will be out I, of I the, of, the, the White House a long time ago. Everything's will be, Bush's problem. Huh? Everything's Bush's problem. It's his fault. Well, but that's it what I mean. Is. <laughs> yeah, because he just bypassed. So he, right. It's Bush's and the next guy who's exactly. going to come to the to the next to the next mm -hmm. election. Exactly. Okay, all this all this space here mm -hmm. is empty. Mm -hmm. But but you're saying if really. it, if it had been a white president, Holder would have been fired. Oh, Holder would not exist. He would have never beca he would have you never know, gotten in no, office. No. He would have never you know, been born. Wait, wait, wait <laughs> no. a second. We have a new presidential candidate is Dr. Ben Carson. Mm -hmm. And with all due respect, Dr. Benatti, if someone like Dr. Ben Carson was in and was president, I think it would have been a totally different presidency, a totally well, different administration. You don't, you don't need you don't need to ask me for 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 discussion there. Mm -hmm. Not only is in not only is an intelligent man, mm -hmm. is an individual who has common sense. Yes. You know, in everything in life, the first important thing to be able to succeed or to do any enterprise is use 
common sense. Yes. And if you don't use common sense, then you have problem. Mm -hmm. And Carson has common sense in religion, yes. in politics, in medicine, mm -hmm. in, in, in his private life, mm -hmm. and he has a charisma. Yes. So maybe <clears throat> the population should vote for him to heal the damage that Barack Obama did to the black mm -hmm. population in this country. Correct. And if anyone listening is not familiar with Dr. Carson, I would like to personally recommend his book. I just read it over my vacation, One Nation. Mm -hmm. He has the ability of taking extremely complex issues that face the country mm -hmm. today. Breaking it down. And he breaks it. it down so simple using intellect and common sense. Mm -hmm. Let us pray that um, <laughs> Ben Carson runs for the next president. I'm working on having him on the show again, by the way, Dr. Benani. So He was good. a great guest. Yep. And a great American. Oh, Indeed. Yeah. Coming up mm -hmm. next, uh, is the fight over? Who, who won, by the way? I'll, I'll call the it. Poodle. All right, we'll have the judge's the decision when we return. <laughs> <laughs> you, you got me there, Jeff. <laughs> no, but coming up, we do, we do have Brett Wilcox. Yeah, he's going to join us to discuss genetically modified organisms and why they're dangerous for us. You're listening to American Medicine Today on News Radio 970 WFLA. If you suffer with Beck, back, neck, or <laughs> sciatic pain. Or if you don't like Beck, the musician, <laughs> give us a call. <laughs> Give them a call at the Benati Spine Institute, 855-267-0483. We'll catch you on the flip side of the break. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Benati created, perfected, and patented the Benati Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Benati invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Benati Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Benati succeeds where others fail. This is the first time that I am pain free after 18 years. And it's just wonderful. I love it. Phenomenal results. No pain whatsoever. My pain is virtually gone. Nothing short of a miracle. Those surgeries gave me my life back. Already I feel like a new person. I'm going home new. I can chase my grandbaby now. I can garden. I can cook. And uh, I'm really thrilled. The outcome has been remarkable. I feel 100% better. It's like a miracle. It was phenomenal. It literally did change my life. I was in a wheelchair at that time and uh, I left here walking. Every single pain that I had when I came here is gone. I'm ready to go home and feel great. This place is great. Thank you. Everything that they said they would do, they have done and I'm very, very satisfied and happy with those results. I knew in surgery, in fact I told the surgeon when he relieved the pain off the nerve. The pain is gone. I'm feeling wonderful. I have no pain. I feel better than I felt in four years from the surgery. It was almost immediate relief. Today I am totally pain free, which is just amazing. It's fantastic. It definitely works. I mean, I really don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Benati created, perfected, and patented the Benati Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Benati invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Benati Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Benati succeeds where others fail. You're listening to American Medicine Today, presented by the Bonatti Spine Institute, featuring the internationally acclaimed inventor of the Bonatti Spine Procedures, Alfred Bonatti, MD. Once again, here are Dr. Bonatti and your host, Kimberly Brumell. Thank you for watching and listening to American Medicine Today on News Radio 970 WFLA. I'm here with our executive producer, Ethan Euchre, mm -hmm. our senior fellow, Jeff Wagstaff, and of course, world renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Alfred Bonatti of the Bonatti Spine Institute. Hello. <laughs> 
<laughs> He's saying hello well, with his mic off. Hello. There you go. <laughs> now, here's someone we've been waiting to talk to, mm-hmm. Brett Wilcox. He is calling in from Alaska. Now, he and his son just finished a run in July where they were kind of running around letting people know about the dangers of GMOs, and those are genetically modified organisms. Now, he's a licensed professional counselor, an athlete, an activist, and author of We're Mono... Monsanto. Monsanto. See, I keep saying it wrong. Monsanto, <laughs> feeding the world lie after lie. And Monsanto is a big company. He'll explain what yes. it is. Brett, welcome to American Medicine Today. How are you? I'm good, Ethan. Thanks for having me on. It's a pleasure. Mm-hmm. So kind of uh, take us through who mm-hmm. Monsanto is, why you're angry at them, what GMOs are, why and they're we, not good. why they're not good, mm-hmm. and uh, why you decided to run across the country. Sure. Uh, Monsanto is, is a chemical company, first and foremost. They got started in 1903, I, I believe, and, and some of the gifts they gave us back in the last century in, in, included DDT, PCBs, and Agent Orange. And uh, they were having so, so many problems with their image and their reputation due to the Agent Orange issue that they decided to branch into agriculture. And uh, they patented Roundup, and, and Roundup, uh, I mean, they... Roundup includes three patents. It's, it's an anti-chelator, it's, a, it's an antibiotic, and, uh, and one other that I've forgotten right now. But anyway, they, 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 they created uh, plants that have a bacteria that is able to resist the presence of Roundup. So now farmers can spray Roundup as much as they like on their fields, and the target uh, crop, the corner, the soy, or whatever it is, will not die, but all the other plants will die. And that's a problem because these plants are living, the food is living, it absorbs the Roundup, and then we end up eating that food, which of course causes all sorts of problems uh, in human beings. uh, Going back to the earth, it saturates the earth, it kills the soil bacteria, and we know that farming is much more than than drawing stuff out of the ground. It's it's actually creating a healthy soil environment, and Roundup does just the envir- just the opposite. It, it creates super weeds and super bugs when when these uh, plants and, and animals uh, develop resistance to Roundup. So uh, that gets us going on a chemical treadmill. And the solution from the chemical industry, of course, is ever more toxic chemicals to solve the problems that were created by their own previous round of chemicals. And we see that now coming on with uh, Dow Chemicals uh, 2,4-D corn which is uh, genetically modified to resist both Roundup and 2,4-D, which was half of the chemical composition of uh, Agent Orange. I I just have a question, though. When when people are eating those foods that were in that crop that had this chemical, how is that affecting them? I mean, obviously, it doesn't cease to be poisonous once you ingest it, correct? Well, if you believe the uh, the industry, it does cease to be poisonous. They mm-hmm. they actually put that out, and, they, and they've been putting that, that lie out there for 20 years. Mm-hmm. But there are many researchers now that are coming out and, and showing all sorts of harm associated with the ingestion of Roundup. GMO Free USA lists some 1,600 different studies on their website mm-hmm. uh, linking round, or the problems with Roundup and, and genetically modified foods in general. Mm-hmm. And so Roundup, I mean, we've all seen it on the shelves at our grocery store. Is that the same Roundup that we're talking about? Yes, that's exactly what it so is. So people should not be buying this stuff and spraying it in their gardens? I, I don't think there's any morally defensible reason for purchasing Roundup because when you purchase Roundup, you're putting money into the coffers of Monsanto, and then Monsanto then, then turns around and goes to the, the state elections and makes sure that uh, the people that are trying to get GMOs labeled can't do that because they, they fill the airways with propaganda and lies about how labeling will be bad, and so people vote against labeling. Brett is a, is a gentleman who grew up in the Midwest around farming and agriculture my whole life. I know that we've been eating these chemically modified foods for decades now. Um, what does the hard research show the effects on you and I as these enter our daily diet? Well, again, there's, there's different research that comes out with different findings, but we remember uh, uh, Seralini's study. He's the guy who, who gave us those great pictures of the rats that were bulging all over, and that kind of took the, the Internet by storm. So we're talking about autoimmune disorders. We're, we're talking about uh, digestive problems, ga- 
gastrointestinal problems, reproductive problems. And, uh, and, and again, this is the, when you say hard research, that's really hard to nail down because the industry will not do uh, human feeding studies, and in fact, the industry doesn't do anything more than a 90-day feeding study, and because they own the patents on these products, they really make it very difficult for re independent researchers to do the science. But the Seralini study, which went out in, in peer-reviewed uh, uh, literature, was later retracted because Monsanto got one of their men as the editor of the biotechnology part of the, the, uh, the journal got it retracted, and then it was later republished just this past spring by a different journal vindicating the science that went into that Seralini study. So, uh, Mr. Mr. Wilcox, on, um, I, uh, when, 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 when we got to Europe uh, and we tried to obtain or buy some of the American products that they are vegetables or meat or things like that, those are banned there. They can we cannot export some of some of these uh, the, of these uh, fresh vegetables or, or or meat. Is that the cause why that that that's why uh, they are they are banning our products there? Uh, Europe is much. Uh, farther ahead in the issue than, than we are because Europe is, their media is not controlled to the degree that ours is by the chemical industry. So back, back in the 90s when Arpad Pustai was doing research uh, with, with rats and genetically modified potatoes, he got on TV and said he would not eat these things. And that took Europe by storm and it was only a matter of weeks before the manufacturers uh, stopped sourcing their food ingredients with GMO sources because the people refused to buy them. So it really wasn't any sort of governmental action that created the sweeping change in Europe. It was simply public mandate, public refusal to, to eat the stuff, and the manufacturers had no choice but to go with non-GMO sources. It is, it is amazing. Um, uh, Sometimes I, when I when I go to Europe, I I go and eat uh, and I eat enormous amount of food, and suddenly I found that I am losing weight, <laughs> and and I come back here and in one day in one day immediately I retain fluid and at the same time I swell up, and and I always thought that uh, probably it's associated with the type of food that we're eating. I, I read the same story of a family that was having all sorts of problems with food allergies, and they moved to Bolivia, of all places, and they were concerned about the quality of the food that they would be eating, but they found that when they got down there, when they were no longer exposed to the chemicals and to the GMOs, that the food allergies went away and they were actually healthier. There, there is some scientific uh, reason for us being uh, more obese. There's many reasons, but one of the reasons is, is that uh, Roundup is a, a chelator, and so it, it binds to the essential minerals and nutrients, the, the metals that we need in our body, making those unavailable. So we might eat a huge plate of food, but still have not received the nutrition that we need. So our bodies are still starving mm. for nutrients, and we're still hungry for those nutrients, even though we've just packed in 3,000 calories in a meal. And what if you're taking supplements? It's... Mm -hmm. Withdrawing that from the body, too. Unbelievable. You know what I wanted to ask you, Brett, is just to play devil's advocate for a second. If these GMOs were that bad, why doesn't our government regulate these? Why wasn't there such the public outrage that there was in mm -hmm. Europe so they would put it on a ban list and stop right. using them? Our government is not our government anymore. It belongs to Monsanto. Mm -hmm. uh, the revolving door is so powerful that the key people in the FDA, the USDA, uh, even the State Department, uh, all of these people have deep, deep connections with the chemical industry. Well, this is what I always have the opportunity. I can, I, I always voice that the the politicians they need to be under un, under the leash. They need to they need to have term limits. In that way, these things will be corrected. Term limits is the answer in this country to avoid all this corruption that cor that goes all the way. Yes, that, that's one possible solution, but, but at the presidential level, at least, and perhaps other high-level positions, the only people that are allowed to get to that level are people who are, who are already uh, in bed with Monsanto, so to speak. With the, with the last election, we, we had two choices. It was Obama and, uh, 
and Romney, mm-hmm. and both uh, have deep ties with the industry. Monsanto's uh, Romney's ties go go back some 20 or 30 years with Monsanto, and his cabinet was filled with Monsanto people. So no, no matter who would have won the, the last election, uh, Monsanto would have won. And uh, Hillary Clinton has already uh, made it very clear that she is connected to the biotech industry. She spoke at a biotech industry meeting a couple of months ago and said that the problem is that, is that the industry has done a poor job of uh, explaining uh, what GMOs are to to people such as myself who couldn't possibly understand the the value and benefits of these things, and so they have to do a better job with the PR. And 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 when she was Secretary of State, she she was actively promoting GMOs around the world. It's mm-hmm. very interesting stuff, and I wish we had more time to to chat with you, Brett. Maybe we could have you back on again. I especially was interested all the politics of Monsanto and all of that aside. I wanted to hear about your run across the country with your son. I just find that very interesting. Um, Brett Wilcox. Epic. It was an epic experience. I can imagine, and I'm sure we'll have you back on to talk about it. Brett Wilcox, he's the author of We're Monsanto, Feeding the World, Lie After Lie. Uh, you can read more at runningthecountry.com. Appreciate it, Brett. Thank you for doing what you've done. Thanks to all of you. Absolutely. Thank you. you. Have a great one. (laughs) Very interesting stuff. It certainly is. Well, if you or someone you know is suffering with back, neck, or sciatic pain, suffering from headaches or RSD, give the Bonatti Spine Institute a call at 855-267-0483 or visit Bonatti.com. Coming up after the break, you'll hear more about what's new in American medicine today. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Bonatti created, perfected, and patented the Bonatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Bonatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Bonatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Bonatti succeeds where others fail. This is the first time that I am pain free after 18 years. And it's just wonderful. I love it. Phenomenal results. No pain whatsoever. My pain is virtually gone. Nothing short of a miracle. Those surgeries gave me my life back. Already I feel like a new person. I'm going home new. I can chase my grandbaby now. I can garden. I can cook. And uh, I'm really thrilled. The outcome has been remarkable. I feel 100% better. It's like a miracle. It was phenomenal. It literally did change my life. I was in a wheelchair at that time and uh, I left here walking. Every single pain that I had when I came here is gone. I'm ready to go home and feel great. This place is great. Thank you. Everything that they said they would do, they have done and I'm very, very satisfied and happy with those results. I knew in surgery, in fact, I told the surgeon when he relieved the pain off the nerve. The pain is gone. I'm feeling wonderful. I have no pain. I feel better than I felt in four years from the surgery. It was almost immediate relief. Today I am totally pain free, which is just amazing. It's fantastic. It definitely works. I mean, I really don't know what else to tell you. (laughs) I'm happy. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Bonatti created, perfected, and patented the Bonatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Bonatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Bonatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Bonatti succeeds where others fail. You're listening to American Medicine Today, presented by the Bonatti Spine Institute, featuring the internationally acclaimed inventor of the Bonatti Spine Procedures, Alfred Bonatti, MD. Once again, here are Dr. Bonatti and your host, Kimberly Vermel. 
Hi, I'm Kimberly Bramella, and welcome to American Medicine Today, brought to you by the Venati Spine Institute. I'm here with Ethan Euchre. If people had any idea what, what we talk happens? about while we're off the air, <laughs> they, would, they would crack up. Who, who told you that, that we were off the air? <laughs> <laughs> we're never off the air. And we have our senior fellow, Jeff Wagstaff, here. And it's of great course, to be here. World-renowned <laughs> orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Alfred Benati, mm -hmm. joining us. Doc. And, well, it's all you. Let's look at what's new in medicine today, featuring Alfred Benati, MD. <laughs> um, I think you had some topics you wanted to touch on, maybe the skyrocketing uh, cost of insurance or the influx of people running into the ER when I mean, Obamacare was supposed to prevent that from happening. You're, you're taking my, my, oh. my lead here. Oh, okay. <laughs> now, Take it away, sir. Let me, let me tell you this. We just heard something about uh, Mr. Wilcox's comments. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the whole system is is is, is corrupted. Mm -hmm. Okay, now now we're we're learning that they are feeding us food, that they are they are poison, yep. and and the politicians are in the middle. Say, so, you know something? He said exactly. My my question was very simple. Uh, when you are in, when you are in Europe, you see the people, and the people is not fat. No. Okay, and everybody say because they walk around. They, well, maybe. But the real truth is the quality of food that they have. Mm -hmm. and, and it's important that we start to take action and take action. But to take action, you need to be absolutely sure that you need to control the political system. Mm -hmm. And the political system is so corrupted that what you need to do is you need to get these people out of the office and anybody who has more than eight years in any type of a position, they should be voted out. Mm -hmm. So if we go to elections, what we need to do is we need to elect and say none of these people can be elected. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I know that sometimes you play uh, party behavior. Mm -hmm. You say, well, if I don't vote for this guy, a, a, the Democrat is going to get in the system because I'm avoiding this. The problem is, well, that's fine. Mm -hmm. It's fine. Get all these people out of the system. We need to have term limits. Term limits is the answer to to avoid corruption and put this country in a situation of responsibility. Now, Doc, what do you think, again, to play devil's advocate, what do you think about uh, what if you have a really good leader in office who's doing a great job, the economy's booming, they're, they're doing a hell of a job, they get to that eight year, they should, they still have to go? Tough luck. Yeah. <laughs> Let yeah. them do and good from home. And right? hopefully someone yeah. else will get in there. Yeah, because you know good. something? Uh, if that great leader after eight years will start to have the contact, and the contacts are going to corrupt them. Mm -hmm. And once they be corrupted, they, they don't want to leave. They, they, they know that that is, that is the, 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 the food that they're going to have for the rest of life. No, you need, to, you need to suffer probably for one generation till the people start to go and say, okay, we have a clean system and in, 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 in the, in the, in the political system now is responsible. Well, what, what's the old adage? Absolute power corrupts absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Right. Well, mm -hmm. it, it happens all the time too, Doc. You bring up a good point where you get these sort of fresh, uh, you know, senators yes. or congressmen that it's their first term. They're new to Washington. Idealistic. They're all, you know, fired up to get in there and make changes and they try to, but A, they're the new guy, so nobody right. pays any attention to them. And then B, they sort of succumb to the system of corruption and then they end up, you know, reneging on everything that they said they were going to do when they get in there. Yeah, but you start to see already they, those, those quote unquote young, young guys mm -hmm. that they are, they, they, they went pro, pro, in, in the, in the election six years ago or four, four years ago, mm -hmm. you, you found those guys already talking from both sides of the mouth. Mm -hmm. And then you go, what, what, what happened? Mm -hmm. You were elected to do this, and now you are contemporizing, and you are discussing things like, well, we need to... To, to, to look at both sides. Mm -hmm. No, you don't look at both sides. You look at the right side. And the right side is what is right for the country mm -hmm. and what is right for the people. Right. Absolutely. It's, it's not what is right for them. Exactly. Mm -hmm. more, 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 more time you give <clears throat> to these people in this position, mm -hmm. more difficult is to cork them out right. because they have a lot of things mm -hmm. that they, they, they feed 
from. Mm -hmm. Now, if we have, if we, we, we talk about this is the country of the people. Mm -hmm. So if this is a country of the people, why in the hell do when we don't really exercise our right? And our right is you are four years and you are doing a good job. I'll give you four more years. And in four more years, you are at home, baby. Because you know what? After that, these guys develop all these relationships mm -hmm. and they get fat and comfortable and they get laws that they are not applied to the people that they apply to themselves. Well, that's a, that's a lot of the reason that the American people don't stand up and do something is because for the most part, mm, we're pretty comfortable. You know, we get used to, they get complacent. complacent. Yeah, that's yeah. why you don't see revolution in this country. You see it in other countries where they have it horrible conditions in America it's kind of like oh, I got my iPhone I got this I'm okay you know there's no outrage anymore right because they're getting handouts well, though Dr. Benati mm -hmm. to your point about term limits when we hear these political debates whether it's from the right or from the left we always hear about the original intention of our framers mm -hmm. and the one thing that I think both sides of the aisle can agree on is when our country was being developed the idea was was to take people from their everyday lives mm -hmm craftsmen, doctors, lawyers, um, everyday people come to Washington, serve, and then return to their communities. So when we talk about the intent of the framers, mm -hmm. that was the primary intention of those men who wrote the documents who, who really guide our country. Very true. Yeah, well, you know, the, 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 the good point is that you start to see the tremendous discontent that is all over the country not only against the Democrats that they screwed up enormously in these in this, uh, years, mm -hmm. but at the same time on the Republicans because they don't have backbone. Mm -hmm. Okay, then, then they continue compromising. Uh, the only person that I look that still has a really good backbone is Cruz. Yeah. Ted Cruz. Yeah, Ted Cruz, Ted Cruz still maintain his integrity. The rest of the people who was elected, uh, they are in a situation that they are, they are changing. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a look at what's new in medicine today with Alfred Benati, MD. I could have just let you say it, Kimberly. <laughs> and, and there you have and it. And there you have it. <laughs> well, that about wraps up our program. Again, if you or someone you know is suffering with back pain, reach out to the Benati Spine Institute, 855-267-0483, or visit Benati.com. Make sure you tune us in on Fox Business and on local ABC News. We'll see you next week. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Benati created, perfected, and patented the Benati Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Benati invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Benati Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Benati succeeds where others fail. This is the first time that I am pain free after 18 years. And it's just wonderful. I love it. Phenomenal results. No pain whatsoever. My pain is virtually gone. Nothing short of a miracle. Those surgeries gave me my life back. Already I feel like a new person. I'm going home new. I can chase my grandbaby now. I can garden. I can cook. And uh, I'm really thrilled. The outcome has been remarkable. I feel 100% better. It's like a miracle. It was phenomenal. It literally did change my life. I was in a wheelchair at that time and uh, I left here walking. Every single pain that I had when I came here is gone. I'm ready to go home and feel great. This place is great. Thank you. Everything that they said they would do, they have done and I'm very, very satisfied and happy with those results. I knew in surgery, in fact I told the surgeon when he relieved the pain off the nerve. The pain is gone, I'm feeling wonderful. I have no pain, I feel better than I felt in four years from the surgery, it was almost immediate relief. Today I am totally pain free, which is just amazing, it's fantastic. It definitely works, I mean I really don't know what else to tell you, <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> Thank you.
Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Bonatti created, perfected, and patented the Bonatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Bonatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Bonatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Bonatti succeeds where others fail.